What is going on, snipers? Naeem Alobaini here. I hope all of you guys are having a wonderful day today. I am so excited to make this video. If you're watching this after it's already published, feel free to use the 1.25x speed in the description below. Actually, in the video settings. I always make that mistake. This is exciting. March 1st, 2018. We're going to be taking a look at the market, looking at coins like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Tron, seeing where prices are headed over the next couple of days, the overall market sentiment in a fundamental and in a technical aspect. Once again, my name is Naeem Alabadi here with Sniper's Tube. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. So currently we've got our Bitcoin chart pulled up here. If you guys are looking at this chart, you can see we're currently at price levels of 11,127 US dollars. And this is on the one hour chart, which actually just consolidated. We saw a little bit of a bull flag pull up. Now we're seeing that run up continuing this flag pattern here. You can also notate here if we actually go here on the one day chart. What I want you guys to see here is this flag that we are going to be watching over the next couple of hours into the next couple of days depending on how long it's going to take to break this resistance level, which is an overall trend that has continued itself over the past couple of days. So we're going to talk about that especially, and we're going to be referring to a couple different things on this live stream. Our Discord community, this is a community that we actually have built for all of you. The link is in the description to actually get into our Discord. And if you guys go to our Trading 101 section, we actually have all of these flag patterns, cup and handles, head and shoulders all pulled up there. And then we're also going to be referring to our trade alerts in some aspects. If you guys are getting our trade alerts or our trade signals, which is on the patreon.com slash snipers, the link is in the description. It's a subscription based uh, trade alert system we have. Uh, if you guys are the in the VTC trade, uh, you should have already taken profits. I just want to make you guys clear of that. I think we cleared about 16 plus percent on this one. If you look here, this is actually where we made the trade alert. And then this is where the profit was supposed to be taken. So I just want you guys to know that because it's entering that stop loss zone. So hopefully you don't have those trades still in. And let's go ahead and see who's online right now. Take some user requests and see what's happening here. Oh, wow. We got a huge view count today. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's see who we got here. John L on the live stream. Joe T flips. Orens Brian in the house, joining in through Periscope. Interesting. If you guys don't know, we're actually live streaming now on four different platforms, and that's kind of how we roll here on Sniper's Tube. If you're gonna do something, you might as well do it big, right? And that's how we like to roll. So, what do you guys think about Bitcoin? Let's take some uh, quick comments here and see what everyone is saying. To see if there's any sort of common ground here within the community because obviously it's uh starting to see a little bit of a run-up but the question is how long is it going to run up is it going to continue its run-up and is it going to go to the next level breaking that 11,800 resistance that we saw previously so let's go ahead and see what we've got going on here oh man full-on chat room right now so many so many messages here let's, let's go ahead and see if we can even uh sort through all of these here give me one second uh bam 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 so let's go ahead and start off here our price prediction here with bitcoin now i want you guys to notate this flag pattern we've been watching this for quite a bit now uh let's go ahead and redraw this if we actually pull up our live stream chart i think i already have this pulled up on either our trade alert or our live stream area let's go ahead and see if we have this already drawn out so that we can just kind of dive into it um btc us dollar let's go ahead and pull that up here so here's the flag pattern based on this we have finally broken the flag wow and this was on the four hour chart so currently in my opinion this is an extremely bullish break and resistance you can see we've got these ascending support levels currently finding a little bit of uh, resistance right on top here around 11,169 which is completely fine in an upward impulse wave here is what we're seeing you can see this cup and handle formed there's another cup and handle bam that ended up breaking out testing those resistance levels that resistance level tried to break out it broke just a little bit and then it went saw a little bit of an abc correction consolidation now seeing that impulse wave breaking right through that 
exactly how we actually predicted the breakout if it were to break out which it has and now in my opinion i am officially going to say that i do not see any further downside here for bitcoin going back to the six thousand dollar range it's just way way too high to see that and in my opinion this was the bottom this was the oversold levels that's pretty much why we saw one of the largest buy volume candlestick uh or graphs here uh you see this buy volume bar one of the largest ever in bitcoin history and i think that's certainly because of the fact that people understood the fact that it was oversold and it was time to buy this is an ongoing trend that actually started right around december 10th and we have finally broken through this flag so <laughs> hooray to bitcoin somebody said audio volume is too low hell yeah your mic is low brother oh i'm so sorry why is my mic low i am so sorry let me go ahead and uh pull this make this a little bit louder maybe this will help out all right let's see here let's go ahead and make this a little bit louder i do apologize if uh, the mic is a little bit low here let's turn on the audio just a bit um we'll go Do you guys hear me fine now? Is this a little bit better? Do you guys hear it? How about this? Is this a little bit better? I hope this is better. We got George Bervanicus in the house. Ollie Scout said better. Thank you, Ollie Scout, for the confirmation. Mr. J Knot in the house. Mike Bitten, Kurt Brassard, 41 Sports, Dalton L, Frank McLovin, Mayor Najimi, Tony Tesh. Bobby, Christian M, Nikki Denonzo, Flip ZD, Seth Bilgrams, Not Fox. Man, we got a full house. Are you guys excited about Bitcoin? I am so excited being the fact that we broke through this flag and it is officially confirmed that we have broken the flag pattern from December 10th, 2017 up to March 1st, 2018. I expect March to be a beautiful month in the cryptocurrency market. I expect March to be an awesome month in SniperSubes community in general, being the fact that we have broken this three-month-long pattern finally. And this is a huge, huge mark in the timeline for Bitcoin as we start seeing these levels starting to impulse its way up. Now we're, start, we're starting to see this impulse wave going into that Fibonacci retracement level here. Going to see a little bit of resistance. I guarantee we're going to see resistance right around 11,725. Once again, 11,700 level is a Fibonacci retracement resistance level. The Fibonacci retracement is known to be a predictor for support and resistance levels. You can see how we went up, found resistance, went back down, bounced, and found support right on that Fibonacci retracement of the 38%. So Joshua Stephen Ward said, hallelujah. I agree. Christopher Moy said, we're going to make so much money if you play it right. Once again, the market's all psychological. You can still lose in an upward market. In a downward market, the smart ones were margin trading and shorting, but that's a very risky strategy. I don't recommend that for everyone. If you guys don't know about shorting, a lot of people, especially in our community, made a lot of money while Bitcoin was headed down because they were shorting Bitcoin. What that means is you're betting against it. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to put $10,000 in Bitcoin at $6,000, wait for it to go to $10,000, then sell and make a $4,000 profit on every single unit that is converting. Shorting is totally different. You're actually saying, you know what? I think Bitcoin's going down to $5,400 if it's at $6,000 or it's going down to $2,000. And that's how a lot of people made money in the downtrend. Especially because of the fact that if you guys are watching Sniper Soup, we predicted this on the dot. We said it was going to bounce on 5,900. It bounced on 5,900. We said it was going to see resistance right around 11,800. It saw resistance at 11,800. We said it was going to bounce back down to 9,300. Guess what? Bounced right at 9,300. If you guys are following us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Sniper's Tube, you guys know I tweeted 9,300 is a place to watch. Somebody tweeted back at me and said, why 9,300? That doesn't look like a support level. I'm thinking it's going down to 8,000. I'm like, I don't think so. 9,300 is a very, very, very strong support level. And it was pretty obvious. It was the Fibonacci retracement. I'm using basic technical indicators. Why do so many people complicate the market? You look at Elliott waves. You look at ABC corrections. You don't need to get into depth. Use your strength. 
find which indicators you want and prefer, and then start to utilize those for every single trade you make. Stop scattering yourself. Stop trying to use 10, 15, 20 different indicators. Here's something my mentor taught me extremely early on. He said, Naeem, a boxer always goes back to the fundamentals because the fundamentals are what's going to win a championship. In trading, the fundamentals are what's going to win a championship. If you think you want to get more and more complex, you're lacking. I read a book, to, uh, actually, yeah, today and yesterday, Crypto Assets. Highly recommend this book. Look at that. This is clear. Oh, this is so cool because of the green screen. That is so cool. Look at that. The book is clear. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Oh, man. Hey, bye. Hey, bye. Hey, bye. <laughs> Oh man, highly recommend this baby, Crypto Assets. Somebody says, that's a great analogy, Joshua Stephen Ward. That sounds like a master name. Oh, the mic was low when I popped my LaCroix, so we're going to have to do it one last or one more time. Bam. Somebody said, haha, on fire. Name is gaining more and more confidence and charisma on his live streams by the week. Mike Wiley. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. March is going to be the month, man. I am telling you, I was just on the East Coast working on our website. Our website's going to come out. It's going to have extremely uh, basic features in the first phase of rollout. But as it progresses, as we evolve it, as the platform grows, as the community grows, we're going to enhance it, add more features, have more Ruby masterminds, have more Emerald masterminds, have more Sapphire masterminds, have more community live streams, have more analysts, have more indicators, implement imp implementations, teachings, lessons, all providing for the community for you all to become full-time in trading. Here's something I want you guys to know. If you're a full-time trader, guess what? You can travel the world with one of these and you can make a full-time income greater or even equal to what you're making right now and travel the world. Go to Bali, go to Thailand, go to Fifi Island, go to Australia. Sydney is beautiful. Go to the Ukraine. Beautiful places in this world. Iceland, Greenland, Norway, Nor... Guys, Norway is beautiful. The women there are beautiful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I respect women, but they are beautiful in Norway. Beautiful landscape too. If you've ever been to Norway, surrounded by beautiful, beautiful mountain, mount, mountains, rocks. Guys, full-time trading. October 2017 was the day I, or the month that I became full-time was the end of October. Uh, I, I walked into my corporate job. If you guys are uh, were in our Facebook group, you guys saw our uh, my I, my video. It was a 15 minute video, literally, of me walking into my job. I walked in. My shift was from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. I came in at 3 p.m. I walked in. I work at a sales. It's call center, so it's a huge floor. And I w walked up to my director and I said, "Hey, man." And he said, whoa, 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 before you say anything, he's like, why are you coming in? He looked at us, he's like, why are you coming in at the time you're supposed to be leaving? He's like, you're quitting, aren't you? I said, I smiled, I said, yeah. He's like, Bitcoin? I said, yeah. He's like, we gotta talk. And then he walked me to his office, we signed the documents, I walked out, he gave me a call, he said, I have $10,000, show me how to invest it. I said, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is what I would recommend. Told him exactly what to do. He made $2,600 that month. And then, I don't know, I haven't caught up with him since, to be quite frank. So, um, I'm telling you all, having a secondary source of income, having a full-time income outside in a way of where you're currently creating income can 100% be possible in this market where there's extreme volatility. And I'm telling you that from the bottom of my heart. And the reason I say that is because I've experienced this myself. But not only that, my passion and my dedication is going to go towards helping each and every one of y'all do the same exact thing. Because guess what? There's one thing I know, and that one thing is more money is better than less money at all times. You can help more people. There's not a church in the world that would deny a dollar because they can use that dollar and help others. So don't deny the dollar. Create it. Become something. Stop playing video games. Stop getting out of work at 5 p.m. I know you're making six figures. I know you're probably making seven figures, but still you don't have freedom and Trading can give you that freedom now. Some of you guys love your jobs. I'm not I'm not bashing jobs I'm not putting things down. I'm just saying having more income is better than less income Right, especially when you can control it. You're like hey, you know what baby girl? 
I want to go to a, a second honeymoon. I want to go to Paris, France. Well, guess what? If you can control your income, you can say, all right, give me one second. Let me get on a, let me do a couple. Oh, okay, perfect. We just, uh, we just got the funds necessary. And uh, baby, we're going to Paris tomorrow. Like who wouldn't want that option? And if you don't want that option, maybe you have kids. Maybe you have a full-time career. Regardless, I don't know why I'm on this change. Let's get into a technical analysis. I'm sorry, man. Are you are you all like excited? Somebody says ha on fire. Lolly Francisca. I've never seen Francisca spelt that way. That is an awesome name. Shout out to Lolly. Rudy Garcia. This guy now sounds like a joke. Well, how about this, Rudy Garcia? Why don't you uh, click that red X button on the top right of your browser? Because guess what? We don't need you here, brother. This is the sniper's community, brother. Somebody says, uh, yeah, baby. Yes, baby. So what do you guys want to look at today? What coins do you guys want to predict? What analysis do you guys want to do? Johnny Shimto said he's jacked up. Jason Feller would be nice to have an income while traveling in Europe. I agree. Focus Crypto said fired up, bro. You're inspiring. Thank you, brother. Mike Willie said, throw in shade. Joe T, thank you, Naeem. Your speeches are inspirational. Shout out to Joe. Go Greed says, kick him out. Kick him out. Do we got Sarah in the house? Is Sarah online? Do we got our mod on? Sarah, kick him out. Somebody said, Nano, please. Tron, LTC, Dago, Crypto, 10X. Josh, who else we got? Yazia is on here. Julian, Joe T said, what's up? Somebody said Australia, Nano. Let's go ahead. Somebody, Aesthetic Film said TRX. Let's do TRX BTC. So here's a long story short for Bitcoin. I'm going to just kind of do a quick. This is simple, guys. Fundamentals, right? Back to the fundamentals. We're going to see resistance right around 11,700, just like we saw before. Here's the difference. We're not going to go back down past this flag. We're most likely going to see support. It's probably going to go a little bit like this. We're going to see this price level go whoop, bounce right on that. And we might see it drop back down there. Don't be scared if that happens. I'm not saying this is going to happen. This is probably a potential outcome of Bitcoin in the next 12 to 48 hours to see it go up, bounce off that Fibonacci retracement resistance, and it possibly could find support back at that flag. But guess what? It might just go up here and then maybe find a little bit of consolidation and then start testing this a little bit more until it breaks a little bit higher up. Here's what I'm telling you at this point. If you have not gotten your position in Bitcoin yet, whoop de doo no big deal. There are two different types of ways you can get a great entry point. Obviously, one way is to buy low, right? Buy in the red, sell in the green. There's a way for you to estimate where you want to make a entry point. And like, for example, when we went up to this high at 11.7, we knew we were going to find resistance because of that flag and we started to consolidate, the best entry point would have been at the support level of the Fibonacci retracement, which was right around 9,300. Then we saw that bounce into that impulse wave. We're gonna expect a little bit of consolidation. It just makes some sense as soon as it hits that Fibonacci uh, resistance, it's probably gonna see some downside. I think that's gonna be the perfect entry point for Bitcoin. If you wanna get that entry point in now, get that entry point in so that when it starts going to the 12s and the 13s and the 14s, you're already gonna have that position locked and loaded and you can go ahead and ride that wave up dependent upon what the pattern is going to create over the next couple of days. That's really what the focus is on right now. We've finally broken through this pattern. And here's another thing. A lot of people were predicting that we were potentially going to find this and go back down for another dip. And I told each and every one of you live last week that I did not expect that to happen. It was probably the least likely scenario in my opinion, because the market sentiment right now for Bitcoin is at an all time high in my opinion. There are more banks, more individuals flocking towards this new technology because they understand it's going to disrupt their industry. The Merrill Lynch's, the, the Goldman Sachs, these banks, Chase, Morgan Freeman, guys, they're going to go out of business if they don't adapt. They don't change. Guys, it's not about knowing. It's not about action. It's about ad, ad, uh, adoption. It's about adapting to your environment. The one that can adapt to their environment the most. Why do you think... Why do you think humans are so powerful in this world? It's because we know how to adapt to different environments. I think that's 
one of the most overlooked aspects of the world. It's the fact that being able to adapt is one of the most powerful skills you can have. And more, more and more companies are going to be getting on board. And guess what? You can't buy substratum with US dollars right now. Guess what? You have to buy Bitcoin. So there's an actual utility to it. Some people say there's no utility to Bitcoin. Guess what? There is a utility. How do you want to invest in Amisco? How do you want to invest in DGD? Right? How do you want to invest in Tron? How do you want to invest in Verge? Guess what? You got to buy your Bitcoin and then trade it. Yeah, I know. Bitrix announced on their podcast they're potentially going to have more USD pairings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, talk. And eventually it's going to happen. But I'm just saying, at this point in time, looking at the current time frame, don't worry about a problem you don't have, right? My mentor said that to me. He said, Naeem, don't worry about a problem you don't have. I would go up, I would go up to my mentor. I say, hey, you know, I just feel like this might happen and this could. And he's like, Naeem, stop stressing about it. Now, that doesn't mean preparation is not necessary. You do have to prepare, but don't worry about a problem you don't have. Don't stress it. Just plan and prepare for every possible scenario. Hope. For the best, plan for the worst. Somebody says, Naeem sounds kind of high. Did he snort coke on his dollars from his long, from 6K, LOL, Zocker band? <laughs> no, man. It's the LaCroix. This is called healthy water. This is called guilt-free soda. Yo, I, I, I need to get endorsed by LaCroix. Guilt-free soda. Live here on Sniper's Tube. So, let's do TRX uh, BTC or somebody. I think they said USD. Let's do TRX USD um, to see what's happening. Actually, let's get a Binance chart up here so we can have a little bit more statistical data to see this. Oh, this is a Binance chart. Let's do Bitfinex. Who has the most data here? TRX BTC. If you guys know, if you guys want the best charts when you're looking at coins, let's just do TRX BTC. That's going to look a lot better. I like seeing a little bit more on the chart, not just a blink chart here. Bam, that looks a lot better. The more data, the more powerful the chart. Somebody asked me this question the other day. They said, Naeem, what is the best time frame to look at patterns? Like, I see cup and handles for me on the one minute, the five minute, the 15 minute, the one day, the two day, the one hour, one week. I said, well, it really depends on what you're doing. The more data the chart has, the more powerful that pattern is going to act. So for example, if you're looking at a one minute chart, and you see a cup and handle, it's not that powerful or credible in any way because there's not that much data to be put into that one minute chart because it's just going by the one minute. So if you're looking at a one day chart, it's a little bit more powerful than a one minute chart. And when you see, if you see a cup and handle on a one day chart, it's a little bit more reliable of a pattern than on the one minute chart because even patterns don't always go the way we want them to. But patterns are the exact way that we're able to predict a lot of different things in the market. Highly recommend all of you Discord. Link in the description if you guys are on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or Twitter. Somebody says Monero is breaking out. Interesting. So looking at Tron's price prediction, uh, here's let me show you something really interesting about Tron right now. Um, what I like about this chart, let's zoom in a little bit to the four hour. You can see we saw this initial breakout of volume. Now, this right here is an indicator that we're seeing more buyers in the market here for Tron. Volume is all about supply and demand, and prices are all about supply and demand. This right here is an indicator that we're starting to see more market sentiment head towards the altcoins, and it's exactly what we predicted as well. A couple of days back, I talked about how altcoins were most likely to start seeing some strength over the next couple of days, comparative to Bitcoin, being the fact that the altcoins never really saw their run up after the consolidation that we saw from December. And now that we're seeing Bitcoin starting to pass those resistance levels that we were previously watching, in my opinion, altcoins are going to be the ones to follow almost like tethered to Bitcoin, not tethered. I'm saying tethered, which means you're attached to something. So now people are going to start tether drama just because I said tether. But if you don't know the definition of tether, tether means you're attached to something. So the altcoins are attached to Bitcoin because you can get altcoins for the majority of them through Bitcoin. And then there's certain exceptions like Litecoin and Ethereum that have a little bit more adoption because they've been around a little bit longer or they have more utility, which enables them to have a little bit more of a need within the major exchanges. So somebody says favorite LaCroix flavor, Ben Bashman. It's actually Ben Bachman. This is actually my favorite, uh, my first time trying this one, uh, Pample Lemos or Grapefruit, I guess. I may have murdered that name, but it's pretty good. I like this one a lot. 
Somebody says tether drama, lol, Dave. Johnny Chimpo said Stratus, status. ADM said TRX was added to Bitfinex, that's why. There you go. Good one. So that's one fundamental indicator. So there's fundamental analysis, technical analysis. If you know something's going to be on a new exchange, I don't think Bitfinex announced that because exchanges typically don't do that just because of legalities and regulations. But that's a huge factor here. That's probably why we're seeing this influx in volume. So it was just added to Bitfinex. And here's the thing. The reason you see that is because when an exchange adds a coin, it creates more demand. It opens another door where sellers are waiting to come into that coin because of the fact that some people may have not have had a Binance account to trade Tron, but they had a Bitfinex account. They were probably trading Ripple and Litecoin and Ethereum. And then they see Tron pop up and they're like, whoa, look, Tron. Bam, more demand automatically. So it's definitely, you know, a big thing. So here's another thing though, Ripple. What happened with Ripple when Ripple was rumored to be put on Coinbase, right? People bought the hype. Prices went up. People are like, oh, Coinbase is going to add Ripple. Well, guess what? That never happened. So you have to be careful. You, and typically exchanges won't. Somebody said I'm quitting my job right now. <laughs> Leonel. Jason R said, how many mentors do you have? I have several mentors. Uh, I have mentors for different areas of my life. So I have one mentor for marriage, one mentor for finance. Not one mentor. I have many mentors, but different mentors. So, you know, here's how you find a mentor. Find somebody that has fruit on the tree, who has actual proven results, and then follow them on that specific area of where they have that strength. Because I know individuals that are great with their finances, but they have horrible marriages and i'm not going to listen to them for marriage advice but i can certainly listen to them for business advice i know people that have great marriages that have horrible businesses guess what i can listen to that person for marriage advice just not for business advice be careful from whom you take advice from this is a fundamental trait in life this will make you so much more money if you just understand who to take advice from don't just go to the break room and talk to pete or john and take their opinions to heart because guess what it's all about getting perspectives and getting advice from individuals that have been through the alley, who have been through the walk, and who have achieved at the level that you want to achieve at. Somebody says, you are my mentor for Moon Lambo, Mahir Najimi. Thank you, brother. Ernie, have you read Mentored by a Millionaire? I haven't read that, Mr. Robert. Somebody says, do you think swing trading on BTC between 10K to 11.5K is a good idea considering we are not seeing so much volatility? Um, I don't think so. I think you should wait for the next consolidation. If you are going to go ahead and put an entry point, as I mentioned before, for Bitcoin, wait for that consolidation. Let's see where he goes. Anad said, hello, the correlation between finances, success, and marriages. Matt Fislin, help me understand your call for patrons. They have yet so true over the last week they have yet to so true neo btc nano eng so with the alerts there's stop loss zones there's buy zones and there's take profit zones what you want to do is you want to wait for when it hits that buy zone now understand there's zones so what that means is you want to be logical in where you want to set those trades up so for example we had a trade alert it was vtc i think that's right over here and this one was posted i think a couple days it was february 15th so that was just about 15 days ago. So two weeks, which is fairly normal for a swing trade. Swing trades are typically two to six days up to two weeks. And you can see how initially, as soon as we posted it, we saw that breakout right into that take profit zone. Your, your, your goal is to go ahead and take profit as soon as it hits that take profit zone. You can even take profit beforehand if you're a little bit on the less riskier side. However, for example, as soon as this alert was posted, we were already in the buy zone, which meant you can go ahead, place that order, and if you'd like, you can choose wherever you'd like. I actually had a Fibonacci entry target set up, which meant that if the Fibonacci was around this level, then this was the perfect time to actually put that position in. And then we had an RSI entry target as well. The entry target was actually fulfilled, perfect time to buy in. And then as soon as it hits that take profit zone, you take your profits. As you can see now, we've consolidated. If you have these positions, Sooner or later, you're going to want to put those stop losses in if it starts to consolidate even more. If you still have that position in, feel free to ride that out, though. Somebody says, I wait until confirmation. However, after it hits confirmation, it never reaches the take profit zone. Well, you have to actually be patient. So, for example, the Litecoin trade, Matt, I'm still holding that. Even though it saw consolidation from 220 back down to 203, 
it didn't hit the $180 mark that I set the stop loss zone at because that was the mark in which I was watching and I would have let go. But in my opinion, going from 220 to 203 is fine because that is all within reasonable amounts. It wasn't necessarily going to go all the way back down to that stop loss zone. So at this point, I'm still holding my Litecoin, which Litecoin has seen a little bit of that run up. I actually expect Litecoin, let's go actually pull up the Litecoin chart here. I expect Litecoin over the next few days to also be tethered straight to Bitcoin. So you can see we're seeing a little bit of consolidation as Bitcoin starts to rise, which is completely normal. We're gonna bounce right off that 50 day moving average, which is part of the reason why we set up those price levels of the way that we set them up. Cause we were actually doing an alert for the LTC USD trade, which is a little bit of a different chart. Now looking at the LTC BTC chart, this can give you kind of a primer and indicator of where LTC is gonna be in the US dollar valuation, being the fact that a lot of that is correlated with each other. So knowing the fact that we're back down to this 50 day moving average, to me shows that we're in an oversold level in which you can see here, once we hit that oversold level, bam, right here, we saw this breakout. Once again, another breakout when we saw a little bit of consolidation getting closer to that level. Now that we've bounced back towards this level, it's only a matter of time until we're going to see that breakout once again. So part of my mythology when doing trade alerts or trading as a trader in general, because that's my trade alerts. It's just me and my thought process and where I think prices are headed is knowing the fact that, yes, this is based on an LTC BTC chart. But I also understand that the USD valuation for Litecoin can be more significant than the Bitcoin valuation um, in terms of Satoshi value. And the reason you can conceive of that is to understand how the market plays out. So I'll give you an example here. If you pull up the LTC USD chart here, you can see we saw a little bit of consolidation under this 50 day moving average. Once we went back down, we bounced off of that 200 day, which is completely fine. Bounced off of the 100 day, went right through that 50 day moving average, which is extremely bullish. And now we're finding a little bit of support right there on that 50 day. But in my opinion, there's more upside potential, a lot of blank areas here for Litecoin in the USD valuation, which is why that trade alert was done in USD valuations, not BTC valuations, because there's a lot less room to play with here. Matter of fact, we're at these higher highs here in Satoshi value. So even if Satoshi value goes down, I expect the USD value to be the one to see that run up. So in terms of technical analysis, once again, I think we're going to start seeing a bounce soon. In all honesty, that 50 day moving average is a pretty strong support level. If you guys want a little bit more of a clear perspective of that, just go ahead and make that a little bit bolder here. You can see we bounced right off off of that 50 day moving average. Somebody said, is there a night owl tonight? Yes, we have a Ruby plus mastermind tonight. That's going to be taking place on our discord after the stream. That's going to be on the Ruby plus area here in the Patreon exclusive area. Bam, Ruby plus we already got one early bird there just chilling, which is always good. And Limbia said, I am in China for business and YouTube is blocked. Do you have a stream that works in China, other platform? By the way, love your videos and you rock. Love the energy. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, we are on Twitch. We're on Twitter and we're on Facebook right now. So it's not just going to be um, YouTube. Somebody says Tron's mainnet launch date is moved up to May 31st. Thank you for the information, Johnny, and contributing that to the community, brother. Eek Zoolander. Hi, Naeem. Great videos, brother. Quick question. I know you buy and sell crypto a lot. Do you stress out when filing your taxes? Haha. <laughs> you know, I was actually considering going out to Puerto Rico. They have a 4% corporate tax, 0% dividends tax, 0% capital gains tax. Most of the crypto that you're going to trade is going to be taxed against capital gains or either short term capital gains, um, which would be considered income. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but what I will tell you is you'll get taxed quite a bit being in the United States. However, if you are in Puerto Rico, you have a lot more tax benefits, which is why you see individuals like the co-founder of EOS, Brock Pierce, moving to Puerto Rico. And as long as you spend 186 days there out of 360 days in a year, then you are gonna be considered a resident of Puerto Rico, which will enable you to take advantage of Acts 20 and 22 on the tax code, which enables you to have that 4% corporate tax and all those tax benefits compared to having a 39 point plus 39% um, um, corporate tax, which is the highest in the United States, um, depending on the level of tax bracket you're at. So 
Somebody says, what's the name of the current song playing? It's going to be on the description below. Uh, we'll have that on the description soon. Um, it's a custom song actually made here straight for Sniper's Tube um, by one of our awesome uh, producers. So FML did us at off to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Just make sure they got LaCroix. Somebody says, Adrian Hernandez. Naeem, any idea why Ripple is behaving so weak? It does not rise in price with enough strength, but when BTC falls a bit, there's a lot of volume dropping. Expertly, really aggressively. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Ripple is, in my opinion, not going to... It's not going to be worth... Like, it, in a fundamental aspect, in my opinion, Ripple is just not the best place to put money. And I'm not against Ripple. You know, they have their own thing going, but it's it's, you know, in a certain degree, a centralized coin. So... In that manner, seeing those prices run up, I mean, we're going against the banks right now, so why assist the banks, right? So I think overall market sentiment is pretty low for Ripple, and it's probably going to stay like that for quite a bit, unless something major changes or uh, major news, you know, comes out uh, that can change the market sentiment that is currently felt within the community towards Ripple. Julian Martin just puts a bunch of happy faces. Graphics Crypto said, do you think after huge crash still Z Classic is worth buying at dip? Um, it depends. It really depends. We have to chart that out. Look at indicators, Mr. Crypto. So somebody says, how many more chicks do you get now that you're BTC rich? T to be honest with you, man, there's not that many uh, women in the cryptocurrency market. I think 7% of our viewers are females. We need more females. So all you females, get your friends on board. Tell them like, hey, you don't gotta work nine to five. Have that boss tell you what to do. You can be a full-time trader. Actually, the person that inspired me to tr start trading in traditional markets was a lady. Uh, her name was Amy Sankster. If you guys don't know who that is, um, I consider her a mentor of mine, being the fact that it was one of the courses I took. It was a paid course. I mean, I was willing to invest myself took the course uh, at one point in my trading career and it changed everything for me. That was a little bit later down the road. I didn't have much money when I started traditional stocks. This was a while ago. And that's really where I got most of my trading knowledge, but she had a program um, and it was just amazing. And she was actually, I think 22 at the time, very young, full time, traveling the world. And I was looking at her Instagram and she had all these great pictures uh, or maybe it was like Facebook. Um, I don't even know, it was back in the day, but um, you know it inspired me so those those women need to get on board gabriel i'm leon is there going to be a mastermind tonight yes ruby plus mastermind tonight kimberly aguilar we watch all your live streams shout out <laughs> somebody just did a super chat for 4.99 come on man i'm not worth five five bucks man i'm just messing thank you so much brother your channel is great. Was wondering if you could take a look at XMR currently breaking out of its symmetrical time triangle. Let's go ahead and look at this symmetrical triangle happening here. Beautiful chart here. A lot of these 50 day moving averages are really acting as beautiful. Support. By the way, for all of you that say technical analysis don't work, guess what? You don't, you're going to tell me technical analysis don't work when we find support right along that 50 day moving average. Give me a break. Come on. It's psychological. It's a barrier, guys. Seriously, like technical analysis is a risk and reward ratio of the human psychology. It's literally what it is. That's how patterns are formed. Patterns are indicative of past performances. And in this case, you can see we're bouncing right off that 50 day. Beautiful. I love that. And you guys sometimes underestimate the power of this. You know why? Because guess what? If you just know that one simple fact, let's say you're you're aware that it's heading down to the 50 day and you buy here guess what profit all the way up here and then you see rsi starts to peak take your profits anywhere around this area you're still at a profit wait for it to go back down hits that 50 day buy again go back up sell buy sell buy sell buy sell you see how much opportunities this was one two three four five six opportunities right there to make let's say a 3 to 12 percent gain so that's how you become full-time in trading by the way because if you have a hundred bucks just a hundred bucks you could trade this and 
turn that into 150 200 do it again a couple more times next thing you know it's a thousand next thing you know it's ten thousand next thing you know it's a hundred thousand next thing you know you're trading the seven figures claude said i know several women who are into crypto maybe they just have the good sense to keep it on the down low maybe so mr Domin. they're probably changing their youtube channel to male so that nobody knows that the females are watching they're slick they're trying to come from the back end they're trying to sneak in to the market they're gonna pump these coins up there's gonna be a coin called female coin to come out it's gonna hit number one that's actually the coin we're endorsing here tonight no, i'm just kidding 299 Esther <laughs> said here you go lol adrian said thanks bro hope you come to mexico city to have some drinks <laughs> i'll drink some lacroix somebody said ltc consolidating within large flag pattern thunderbird so in this case in my opinion being the fact that we have a channel form this would be a very simple trade for me i would draw this channel out right alongside i'd say this is probably the more reliable channel because this was coming from a consolidation but this was a little bit more of a bouncing channel you can see how this went down it didn't bounce off that 50 day which means it's not an assumptive area to draw a channel and this is a huge part about trading this might help a lot of you and I think this will let me know if it does but it's called assumptive trading and what that means is when you're looking at patterns a big part of it is being assumptive if about if you guys don't know what the definition of that is I'll show you right now sorry for some of you being blinded with that white screen for those of you on 1080p 60 frames per second on your 70 inch screen but let me show you something that I think is uh, fairly important here in the market um, and that is being assumptive did I spell that wrong I did I didn't do the two s's I'm on my other keyboard of the nature of an assumption very simple so I'm not you know condescending right now I'm just saying some people don't know definitions but it's being you know making an assumption and what I'll tell you right now is for example looking at this chart right here if you were just to assume where to draw this channel out what you want to do is look for where it's acting in accordance with the indicators that you're utilizing so in this case if we're utilizing the 50 day and we're seeing where we can put an entry point within the 50 day then you want to look and draw that channel in which it's bouncing off that 50 day so you can see here it doesn't bounce off that 50 day, so I'm not going to use this top as a level to actually draw but I will use this one because guess what it bounced off the 50 day bounced off the 50 day so this is where I'm gonna draw my channel up that's called being assumptive you're being assumptive because you're saying okay instead of drawing the channel out like this I'm drawing it out down here which could make a significant difference with your entry point if you're buying at a breakout because you might potentially have to do that if you're looking to get a position in XMR right now I guess the most logical thing you can do is set up an entry and exit point but do multiple different versions depending on where the chart may go so let's say it bounces off this resistance find some um, some some resistance here doesn't go past this resistance level what you want to do is wait for it to go back down to that 50-day moving average put your position in put your stop loss a little bit below that 50-day most likely under these little wicks that have occurred so I'll probably put the stop loss right around this level 2 million Satoshis 2.3 million Satoshis set up that stop loss and then what you'll want to do buy at the entry at the 50 day wait for that to bounce back up if it starts to find a little bit of resistance take your profits and just continue to play the game until it breaks past this resistance let's say you don't have a position while it's breaking out of that position what you'll want to do look at this wicks here I would set my buy entry point here if you're buying at the breakout so if you're buying at the breakout this is the perfect level two point actually three million Satoshis on the dot and then if you're buying at a support I would say look at that 50 day just buy it right on that 50 day so wherever that's gonna be at the time this could shift being the fact that different data is being implemented into the chart obviously working at a one day if you go into a three hour it's gonna be a lot more detailed you can set up these levels a little bit more accurately being the fact that you have more of an accurate viewpoint however less data which is obviously why you want to use multiple different time frames when looking at your charts determining your entry and exit points which most people should already do somebody said Naeem woke up and put his jacket on top of his pajamas not really this is actually a button-up shirt mark s sir but you're kind of weird mark if you wear this type of stuff for your pajamas man I'm just saying man somebody says uh, I'm just kidding mark you're not weird um, 
El Mahdi, seriously. Somebody says, uh, BTC confirmation. I'm on Vitrix training view. Can you look? Addy, it's confirmed, baby. We broke that resistance, that flag already. Somebody says, Naeem, what whip do you roll around in? You in that Lambo land yet? No, I'm in the Lyft and Uber land right now. I find that way more productive. A big part of my philosophy is to be as productive as you can in your life. You know, you maximize all the time you have. And, you know, I like using Lyft and Uber, to be honest with you. I highly encourage you guys, if you live in a, in a major city, uh, look at your expenses, expenses in one week. Um, you know, look at your car expenses in terms of gas, parking, uh, if you're living in a major city, uh, insurance, uh, maintenance, uh, you know, if you have car payments, look at all those costs for a week and then take a whole other week and just use Lyft or Uber and then see which one outweighs the other. And then you may end up saving money using a service like Lyft and Uber, in which you can go in the back of the car, actually be on your phone doing business or whatever, being productive in some way, shape or form, communicating with family members, whatever it is. And then not only that, you don't have to park. You go straight to your destination. So it's something that I have hacked my life with and it's been working out fairly fine. Somebody says too much stress owning a Lambo. Yeah, same thing with owning a, a yacht or a boat, any boat. It's probably in the shop more than it's on the water. Someone says good advice. Thunderbird, haven't owned a car in over 15 years. Well, Uber hasn't been around for 15 years, so you were probably walking at first, but... Somebody says, uh, what's your take on governments making their own currencies? How does it affect our decentralized system and existing coins? It's more liquidity in the market. I don't see anything wrong with that. More liquidity, the more coins that come out, the more liquidity, the more cash in the market. What does liquidity mean? It's cash, it's tradable, tangible cash. Here's something that's huge. You might hear this in the investment world is the one who has the most liquid cash is the most powerful. What that means is when you have liquid cash, you have more options, you have flexibility, you can invest cash in land, real estate, crypto, traditional bonds, IRA, whatever you want, right? So cash is power. That's why you hear liquidity is power. Someone says, are you gonna be making more videos? Yes, we're gonna go back to our two videos a day, short video in the day, back to the live stream. And we'll actually add a lot more than that soon once we have more um, content creators building their own personal brands on the channel. Brian WB says, if you think this guy's TA is any good, you're a moron. Uh, Brian, I'm going to just give you a little bit of a heads up. Most individuals that criticize others are, nurse, um, are, are um, Machiavellians, which means that they were bullied when they were younger. Um, so I, number one, I just want to let you know. You know, the, you know, the, the brain after you're, if you're over 25 brain, you know, it's going to be really hard to change this about you, but you're actually missing gray matter inside of your frontal uh, your, your frontal lobe. And you literally cannot, uh, you, you literally like almost have to criticize and put people down to feel good and allow yourself to kind of activate those endorphins. So I just want to let you know that, man, um, you know, because what's the point of criticizing people, right? Like anybody could say, hey, this guy's, you know, this guy's shoes don't look good. Well, why don't you just shut your mouth if you have nothing good to say? So uh, let's go ahead and give the guy the ban hammer, the ban hammer, brain WB. Sorry, man. If you have any last words, say it now before you get that ban hammer, baby. Let's do the ban hammer. Let's do the ban hammer. All right. One, two, three. Bam. Banned. Good luck getting that gray matter back, brother. Somebody says nobody's perfect. I love my TA. It's made me a lot of money. You can do your own thing. Somebody says, uh, I'd love to bully you, LOL. <laughs> I don't get bullied, man. I'm sorry. I, I literally can detach emotions. One thing I learned in the, stock, in the stock market is how to detach emotions from almost anything in my life now. So I literally can just detach emotions and I can be completely logical. So logic for me is so much more powerful now in my life than any emotions. You know, I think emotions in general will really uh, hinder your potential because emotions you're acting upon current feelings, not necessarily logical decisions or rational decisions that are based on data, right? Data is key in the world of marketing, right? If you're a marketer, you want to find those specific 
targeted audiences because those are the data sets that are going to bring you the most ROI. So it's the same thing in life. You want to have the most data. <laughs> Somebody, Brian got coached. Corey says, damn, get him, Naeem. The virus is Brian. It's okay if you were bullied. Don't take it out on others. <laughs> the great Potenza says, I appreciate your analysis. Smart stuff. C. Strader said, oh, this guy is smart. Web Advancer said, nice outfit. Thank you, man. Thank you. Somebody said, talk LTC. We'll talk soon. <laughs> Matt Fisklin says, Brian, then why are you on his channel? Yeah, exactly. You know, that it, it, it proves it, right? It proves, it proves it's true. It, like... He was probably bullied and now he just has some, you know what it is? It's like, so when you're bullied when you're younger, like think of this, let's say you got Bob and John. So Bob is being bullied by John. So Bob walks up to John and he's like, you know, like, Hey John, like, and he's like all nice, but he knows John is the one bullying him, but he's going to be nice to him because he doesn't want to get bullied. And then as, so like literally Bob will say like, he'll smile. It's like, Hey John, like good to see you. And then as soon as John walks away, Bob is like that mother, I'm going to freaking kill that guy one day. And he's like in his head, like, he's like, I hate that guy so much, man. Why is he in my life? And like that mindset literally gets built into your mind. Like you literally grow up with that. And then like, as you uh, become an adult, you kind of want to express it more. That's how Machiavellianism is cre like it's formed in your brain with the gray matter. And it's just, there's a lot of aspects to it. There's even narcissism that can be created through the gray matter. Like you got to read on that stuff. I'm telling you. Somebody says, uh, Brian, it's okay. If you were bullied, don't take it. <laughs> MTL analysis, dude, nano and nano. All right, let's take some more requests guys. Let's get out of this bullying thing. Somebody says that was deep. Um, <laughs> shouldn't criticize him too much. Not his fault. Great matter is missing. You know, I listen, he's, he, he's, he's, he start. Listen, here's something. My mentor Tom, he said, if somebody jabs you, he said, uppercut them. And I totally, I totally like, it's not about getting back at somebody, but if somebody jabs you, you're just going to sit there. Like, think about like the, like if somebody jabs you, I'm going to uppercut that. Like if somebody, Oh, I got hit. I'm just going to like stand there and get hit again and get hit again no i get hit it's like oh bah just jab him right in the face you know you, you got you gotta like you gotta like show like that you have like pa like you don't want to be messed with right like you want to be able to show like i'm not i'm not endorsing fighting i'm just saying like you know when i'm raising my son i'm gonna tell my son if somebody like if like don't start a problem don't be the one to start like a fight but if somebody like knocks you in the head you better get up and knock that guy back down like seriously like that's like the the man inside of you you have to like you have to show your strength sometimes like don't let people just run on top of you like you, I, you a lot of people might disagree with that I don't, that's why we can't talk about this stuff on this technical analysis live stream anyways Joe Jesus name, you're violent. I mean, who disagrees with that, right? Somebody says, uh, <laughs> uh, all right, guys. So let's look at this. We did XMR. Let's do, uh, let's do, what is the next one? ETH, BTC. So Ethereum is a little bit of a different technical analysis. Um, I do want to actually spend a little bit more time here because there are a couple things that I want you guys to see here. Um, which could really, really uh, change a little bit of your perspective on what Ethereum is doing right now. Somebody says, <laughs> Encash is Mike Tyson in Prime, Tron. Encash, we'll do Encash, don't worry, we'll do Encash. Is that, what, what is Encash? Is that even a coin? Or are you talking, to, is that like the Naeem coin or something? Oh, man. Somebody says, the only one who is bullying now is you, Naeem. The fact that you still talk about this guy is the fact that you can't take criticism. I love criticism. Matter of fact, criticism for me is probably the most important aspect of everything that I do because it allows me to understand how to tweak, how to actually create something more powerful than what I've already created. So in regards to like, let's say the live stream, if I have great criticism, that can allow me to improve my live streams, like the audio feedback or the video settings. So you know, in my opinion, it's once again, goes back to that jab. If you get jab, you give him an uppercut. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and let anyone jab me or you shouldn't let anybody jab you. 
Somebody says NCash just not listed on Binance. We'll do NCash in just a sec. Um, NCash would probably be a fundamental analysis if it just got listed on Binance. I wasn't paying attention to the new listings today, so um, if that's the case, here's the thing with Light uh, Ethereum here. There is this huge bar of sell volume that has occurred here with Ethereum that brought the price significantly lower than a 50-day moving average. Now, the one thing I don't like about the graph right now, and the reason I expect further downside for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation here, is being the fact that if you look at this graph here, you can see how we went below that 50-day. We found support right along that 100-day moving average, saw a little bit of a run-up past hit towards that 50 day and then bounce right back down. So one thing you guys want to pay attention to is the fact that now that that's happened, it's potentially going to show a lot further downside here with Ethereum being the fact that number one, the volume was low. Number two, it bounced off of the 50 day as a resistance, not a support. And now you can see it's right back down to that 100 day. That is pretty much confirmation that we're going to see further downside. And I'll show you another aspect of this chart here. So that's the 100 day moving average. So the next place to look for is this 200 day moving average. 200 day moving average is quite below. There is still that potential that we could go ahead and bounce down to that 200 day level, which in my opinion would be a perfect buy point for Ethereum. Now, this could certainly change. The other potential pattern that can occur here is we'll find support along this 100 day, not go back down to that 200 day, and then continuously test these resistance levels until they converge. Now, what that means is it's gonna allow Ethereum a little bit of time to kind of move horizontal to where those 50 day, uh, the, the 50 day and the 100 day moving average end up coming together, in which now not only is it finding support on the 100 day, but it automatically now finds support with the 50 day, which now gives it a little bit more strength to build itself up to now see another breakout into higher levels, being the fact that Ethereum in a fundamental sense is a beautiful coin to invest in. There's nothing fundamentally wrong in my opinion with Ethereum and it doesn't have the sort of uncertainties that other coins have because it's utilized so much in the market where most ICOs are built on the ERC20 platform. So it's such an important platform. Somebody says, if you get 100 likes, Will you shave your head? <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. A hundred likes for a head shave? That's uh, that's kind of a uh, not a good idea. So he says, "N cash plus Walmart world takeover." Could you analyze BZC, the Bitcoin gym teacher? We actually uh, we actually have another analysis we have to do after this, but that's Ethereum for you. Somebody says. Can you check vibe? A lot of different requests here. Somebody says, I'm Jamaican. That's nice. That Jamaican jeans. Is there a night owl tonight? Yes, night owl tonight. Or mastermind, Ruby and above mastermind on the Discord. I'll see all of you there. Somebody says, name, as crypto tends to move faster than traditional markets, do you adjust time settings on your indicators? And if so, how? Um, to a certain degree, uh, Jack will read, you know, one thing I do like to do is, uh, I, I like to almost use the same indicators, with the same settings, but alter the way that I think about it. That's more so what I like to do because you want to have a consistent trend or indicator to look at. You don't want to have something that's inconsistent. So if I'm going to utilize different values, then now it's going to become a little bit more inconsistent with what my trading style is trained to trade with. So you want to kind of go with what you're trained, you're trained to do. So I'll give you an example. If like, for example, you are utilizing, you know, let's say you're, you're driving a car and you're racing and you for, let's say you go from a normal car to a supercar. And now that that supercar is faster, you d decide to use K, uh, kilometers instead of uh, miles per hour. So kilometers per hour versus miles per hour. And you're like, well, it's a faster car. I think kilometers per hour, you know, it's more reasonable. Well, guess what? It's still going to be a little bit more confusing. There's going to be more of an adjustment period to use the KMH versus the MPH being the fact that it's a whole different unit type. So instead, 
I think I would prefer the latter in which I do and that's going from a normal car to a supercar using from miles per hour still in miles per hour with the supercar it would just make more sense like if I'm over 200 I know I'm over 200 I don't have to calculate what the kilometer per hour is versus the miles per hour so it's kind of just using what you're used to does that help out a little bit someone says dude why do I feel like someday you're going to be giving a TED talk about crypto um I'd be blessed to have that opportunity if I had that opportunity I thank God every day for just the opportunity to influence all of you and having the opportunity to go to a TED talk that would be a dream come true I mean that's not even something that I've ever thought about I think that would be crazy that would be awesome uh you know it's just a blessing enough to be able to influence and help so many people on the you know on the channel so thanks Naomi. love your work thanks again for the neo alert no problem man how much did you get on that neo alert just wondering i think we had one one guy say 16 percent on neo or no that was uh that was vtc i think it was uh i think neo was i don't know how much was the highest percentage it went to Somebody says uh, 150 likes for green shirt next live stream. Oh man! Every time somebody says that, the likes just start soaring up. Like it's like people wait. <laughs> somebody says 150 likes. Oh man, I'm done with this. Oh, this one's interesting. 500 likes and you do a live trading live stream. I'll do that. If we hit 500, I'll do a live trading live stream. Heck yeah, I'd love to do that. We'll probably just stick it on that five minute chart, one minute chart. Probably go in a margin trading room or something on the Discord, and we'll we'll trade. I don't think we'll hit 500 though. How much we? How much viewer? Oh shoot, we have 439 viewers. I should have never said that. I don't mind doing it. It's just it's gonna be a little, you know. Uh, it's you know you got people watching. It's like, am I gonna make seven percent in this hour? Am I gonna make five percent? If I make two percent, am I not a good trader? Uh, I'll do it though. I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. Now the likes are soaring. Oh man, I'd love to do that though. That'd be fun. That'd be so cool. I might just do that regardless. I think that would help a lot of people. So, you know, stay tuned for that. We'll do some live streams. Somebody said at Snipership, talk about Walmart stock. <sighs> Let's not get into stock market right now. Can I margin trade the likes? <laughs> you're gonna short the likes you're like oh you know we'll short it oh my gosh <laughs> look at the likes they went from like 70 to like 150 oh now they're going to like 130 that's crazy that's good that means you guys want that somebody says uh you should do that sure a lot love to see. yes 500 likes and you wear your headphones in your nose deal we'll do that too so we'll do the I'll, I'll wear my headphones in the in my nose during the whole live trading session unless it falls off then then I don't put it back in That's the that's the deal here Now now the likes are really now they doubled. Oh man. <laughs> You guys are you guys just love to bet with me man I feel like I'm a better on these live streams with these like like requests, you know it's like I gotta determine is this a reasonable like is this gonna eventually hit this number or not? Oh man, we're about to hit 200. That's crazy Somebody said uh, What is margin trading margin trading long story short? I would say it's leverage is what it is So having more leverage with the money that you invest so let's say you're investing 10,000 and that actually allows you to invest you know forty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin or it really depends. There's a lot more complexities involved uh, Very similar like you know margin trading options all of those very complex different things that you know Could make you a lot of money, but can also lose help uh, sh It could also make you lose a lot of money. So they're very risky Because um, with leverage also comes the negative leverage which could totally wipe your portfolio out or your capital or your assets Kilo cuts it can't wait for the website man. Thank you Kilo Shout out to you too, man. I love that you are not biased in the questions you read out loud. Good or bad, you address it all, man. All we have in this world is your word and your balls scar face. I love, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I, don't, I got nothing to hide. I got nothing to hide. I got, like, I, I don't mind, you know. I love it. I love it. It's, to me, it's just like, you know, it, it just shows that, you know, some people have different opinions. Somebody says, uh, you don't own anything with margin trading. We can go to a whole margin trading chat. 
Someone says, uh, he's not an idiot. He can just end the live stream early if he really doesn't want to do something. Spippy tasking. No, but every time we've done that, what are we at right now? Oh my gosh, 157. That's not good. No, no, I, I don't, I've never done that. I've, I've already shaved my head and went blonde because of that. So hopefully this one doesn't have to go through. I don't want to put headphones in my nose. These headphones right here. Oh, that would be weird. Someone said it's Nano. Let's look at Nano. Let's do a Nano BTC chart. A lot of uh, you guys were asking about that. And then NCash, you know, there's no reason because look, if we do the NCash chart here, you know, if it just got listed on Binance, I guarantee you it's not going to show any data. Watch. Bam. Barely any data. Like very little data. It just goes from February 26th till now. This is a three hour chart. You know, I can't do something with a three hour chart. Um, and if you look at the one day, it's even worse. But we'll do nano BTC. What I would say for NCash is go look at fundamental analysis on NCash if you want to know whether or not to invest in it. Um, even nano has very little. Uh, you know technical indicators right now, but if you go into a little bit more of a you know steepman viewpoint and you go into a more zoomed in perspective, you can definitely utilize that. Uh, looking at Nano, it's looking fairly well. It is one of our trade alerts too, right now. Um, I think we had, uh, I think our trade alert for Nano is still. If you guys are getting our trade alerts, um, let's go ahead and pull up the Nano one, see how that's acting here. So we had several different trade alerts here. I know Neo did fairly well. Uh, a lot of these are still becoming and still in the percolator. But Nano, yeah, so that's past the buy zone right now. So if you guys are on our Patreon to get the trade alerts, that's the link is in the description below. Um, then don't, uh, you know, at this point, I wouldn't recommend a buy. Just allow it to really get into that profit zone. Take your profits. Um, and then we'll go ahead and continue to update that. But it's looking fairly good uh, based on the alerts acting exactly as expected. Um, and you should be at a profit now if you are able to buy that buy zone. So at any point, you can go ahead and start taking profits. You guys are receiving those. But we're in an upward trend or upward channel, which is the reason we had that trade alert. And as you can see, with this upward trend, we're finding a little bit of resistance, uh, fairly short compared to where we're at. So this is really the trend line right now. Or the channel that's forming um, and in my opinion we're gonna continue to see this go up being the fact that nano in a fundamental sense is a great project and I think it's gonna have a lot of positive market sentiment over the next couple of weeks being the fact that it's such a fast coin it's such a you know uh, unique coin in my opinion compared to other coins that don't really offer the capabilities or at least the current capabilities of what nano already offers and I really think that this is going to have a little bit of a stronger game over the next couple of months, especially heading into Q3 and Q2 of 2018. I think Nano is going to be one of those coins that are really going to start showing some strength heading towards the top 20, possibly even getting to that top 10. And, you know, there just isn't much negative about it. You know, the team is working, the team is developing, the team is on the move and uh, in a fundamental perspective, I like Nano. Uh, really, what I would be waiting for right now is to see us break this resistance. And I think at that point, the sky is the limit, being the fact that now there's no psychological barriers. People don't know where it's going to go, so they're going to put money into it. And you're going to kind of see a little bit of like how we saw with Ripple. Price is just soaring through the roof. So just make sure you're aware of that. But now we're starting to move towards that apex. So here's another pattern that you can actually determine here. Uh, if we actually go ahead and delete this trend line, you can see where we've got this ascending triangle forming. And I'll show you exactly how that looks here. If you go on our Discord, you can actually go to our Trading 101 section. We got tons of people in the Ruby chat already. Awesome. Uh, but if you go to Trading 101 and you look at the ascending triangle, it's an ascending support line with a horizontal resistance line. So that's how you determine an ascending triangle. So you got a horizontal resistance, which is the top. And then you've got an ascending support, which creates a wedge where there's an apex. And at that apex is really where you start to see that squeeze. And anytime something squeezes, it's like having a pressure cooker. I actually have a pressure cooker in my where I'm at right now. So I, I was going to bring it, but I should probably have it. I should probably have more of that. Book, look at that. Disappear face. For those of you that didn't see this earlier, look at that. The green screen makes this book see through. Isn't that crazy? But this is an awesome book. Highly recommend it. Um, it's called Crypto Assets. Uh, this is such a cool phenomenon. Everything is like seen through. Look at that. 
Isn't that cool? I think that's awesome. Um, but anyways, so this is an ascending triangle. Um, the apex. Somebody said, "What's the apex?" It's the end of this. It's any. It's like the the inner as like the inner part of the. It's where something is starting to converge. So as we get closer to that, I am expecting a breakout here with Nano. If you guys are looking to get a good position here. You guys already know on the trade alerts that I called this out and we'll start to see this break out fairly soon uh, in my opinion. Uh, even though RSI you can see is the top levels, really doesn't affect it when you see these type of strong patterns, especially with this data here. If you go into six hour, you can see all the data is showing that it is on that horizontal or uh, ascending trend. So that's what I would say for Nano. Someone says, uh, <laughs> told you and cash team is huge. I bet. Someone says, what are the predictions of Ethereum and Litecoin? We just did that, Splendy. I do apologize. We don't want to redo two coins. Someone says, book giveaway. We will do a book giveaway today. Yes, we'll do a book giveaway. Someone says, Silver Jaguar, huge. <laughs> Romil Muchal in the house. Sarah is in the house. Tony is in the house. What's best, market cap volume or circulating supply? Um, they're all different. They're all important. I wouldn't say there's a better one. Um, it just depends on what you're looking at. Like if you're looking at an ICO, you might want to look at the market cap and see if it has a you know large, well not a market cap, but look at the uh, total supply. You know, because um, ICO obviously doesn't have a market cap if it's an ICO. But let's say you're looking at a potential swing trade then the market cap might not matter as much. You might want to look at the volume. So that would be more important in a swing trade. But let's say you're doing a long-term investment. Maybe you want something with a lower market cap because it has more potential upside. So it really depends on what you're doing, Tony. So every indicator is used for a specific reason. That's why I say stay with the basics. Understand the basics. Um, actually, with our website, if you guys want a little quick sneak peek. Actually, I can't do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Um, it's looking good. That's all I'll say. I know the rubies and above got a sneak peek, but yes. Someone says, <laughs> well done with a ton of things. What is highly recommended to do our trade alerts? What do you mean? I don't understand that. What is highly recommended to do our trade alerts? Someone says, my message was sent with the $5 with the love of P. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the super chats really quick. We do get a couple super chats. Is there a night? Yes, we do have a mastermind tonight. That's going to be on our Discord Ruby Plus mastermind tonight. So we said, how do you become a Ruby? It's on the patreon.com slash snipers website. So that's our subscription service that we have for trade alerts, trade signals for those of you that don't have as much time to trade. And then we have like podcasts and stuff that give you market health updates stuff like that so you're just not always the one researching on your own and you have actual guidance from individuals that are in the market knowing what they're talking about let's see what we got somebody says oh joshua stephen ward thank you for the super chat joshua i appreciate that brother spiffy tastic says making up for your penny picture <laughs> that is awesome thank you brother i appreciate that as well so it says uh, do you care about the wicks or only the base and the end of the candle says, good question, no fap. No fap. I don't know if you guys know about no fap, but apparently there's like all these benefits of no fap. You guys should look at that. Let's not talk about that. But I would say in terms of the wicks is the wicks can be utilized if you're looking at shorter time frames. So like, for example, you see this wicks right here that actually breaks through this ascending triangle. If we were to go into like a 15 minute chart, that probably does break through in a body too. Look, you can see now it's not a wix, it's actual body. So it depends on how you're trading. If you're day trading, swing trading, you have to know what type of trading you're doing. Like if I'm looking at a six hour, then I can just use the body of the candle and determine the pattern based on the body being the fact that I am swing trading this on the six hour chart. So this right here is the pattern, right? It's, it's not going to be up here. It could be if you were looking at that lower time frame. So it's really 
okay to use either the body or the wicks. It's really a preference, but I wouldn't do anything in between. I would either use the body or the wicks. And if you're using the wicks, you might as well go into a shorter time frame and get more accurate points, not necessarily just using the wicks. So that's kind of what they're there for, right? It's really the open and the close price. Somebody says, can someone help me to invest smart, Splendy? Um, yes, we can help you. That's all we do here, right? We invest smart. I don't want to invest not smart. <laughs> someone says, thank you, brother. No problem, Joshua. Thank you, man, for the support and being, you know, on the community here. Someone says, uh, R sign neutral, higher than average volume, Ryan Brown. Yes. Shout out to Wayne Roberts. Hey, Naeem, love your work, mate. Thank you, brother. Neo approaching the 50 day again on the one day. Time to buy again. You know, Neo at this point, in my opinion, is still poised to have some sort of upward momentum. Um, obviously, it is seeing a little bit of consolidation, but it's right on that 50 day, which is fine. In my opinion, yes, this is a perfect time. If you want to grab some more Neo, go ahead and do so. You can always set up your stop losses right under. If you guys are on trade alerts, we have that stop loss set in a perfect spot to where you're not just going to go ahead and give up any profits. So have that stop loss set up at the proper levels, knowing the fact that it's most likely going to bounce off of this 50 day being the fact that it did it once it was if you if you were being assumptive at this point, you could assume that it's going to now see another bounce. So absolutely great, great call. Thank you, Wayne, for the compliment as well. Someone says, if you had to close your eyes and pick the best mid cap coin, what would it be? Go. All right. One, two. Three, Omisco, OMG, Omisco, OMG. I don't know why that just came out, but I like Omisco. If you guys know OMG BTC, um, fundamentally, it's a great project. So th uh, that was a fundamental pick, but technically, I mean, we can do a technical analysis. It's probably gonna correct looking here, back down. I wouldn't use that 50 day in this case because there's no assumption that it's gonna bounce off that 50 day because you can see how it bounced off of that 200 day Sorry, my ear was like, it was like almost like feeling like there was like wax. Um, you can see how it didn't bounce off that 50 day, it actually broke through the 50 day, went all the way back down towards that 100 day. So, in my opinion, if it starts to head back down towards that 50, don't use the 50 as a predictor yet. See what it acts like at that 50, and I would zoom into the chart, be a little bit more careful if you're trying to get a position into OMG. Um, just want to mention that because some people can be kind of, uh, you know, deceived by a chart like this, knowing that it's starting to head back down. Um, looks like we may even form a potential cup and handle here too. So you can see we've got a little slanted cup neckline there. You got a breakout pattern here, which is part of the cup and handle. You got a cup form. Now you see a little bit of a handle. So that could potentially be a breakout. Wow. Here's a call out right now. OMG, potential breakout, guys. Yeah, it looks great. Um, and right here, you can see the larger perspective is also a rounding bottom. So coming from a downtrend, both of them are indicators of breakouts. If you guys don't know what those patterns look like, let me show you. Uh, you know, both the rounding bottom and the cup and handle. Look, cup and handle, there's a breakout. The difference is the rounding bottom is coming from uh, a descent. So the rounding bottom comes from a descent, forms a cup, forms a handle, breaks out. The cup and handle comes from a breakout, then drops, then forms the cup, handle, breakout. So uh, looking like we potentially might see that here with OMG as well. Someone says... Uh, OMG, like that coin too. Awesome. Someone says, what about XRP long or short today? I would have to look at the graph uh, to say if I'm going to go long or short on something. Someone says, S type the same for the tip, bro. I'll grab 10 of them. Hi, I'm Tyler. I wouldn't say just yet. Let it go back down to these moving averages because it looked like that might be a fair level. It could potentially do this. This 50 day could still rise a little bit. It touches it that would be a perfect level for that handle and I think that could potentially be the breakout here so it could potentially go and correct I think the safest strategy here is to wait on that 50 day someone says can you explain why your BTC resistance line doesn't 
need to meet the top of each peak in the chart. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. I do apologize. I'm trying to think of what you're talking about. Is this the Bitcoin chart you're talking about? This is actually not the one that we've been watching. The, the real one that we've been watching is actually right here, which is a little bit more accurate. I was able to get into a little bit shorter time frame to get more accurate uh, levels. So if we actually do like I'll do a three hour here, you can see if we were to actually zoom out with this flag. Um, actually, it's not exactly where it's supposed to be. Let's go ahead and shift this just a bit. Yeah, so this is how it is. Um, so we have we have broken officially the flag, and if you guys weren't watching earlier, then we announced the official breaking point of this flag. So someone says average. Someone says, "Is there a mastermind tonight?" Yes, mastermind Ruby plus mastermind. We're actually gonna be heading over there soon. Is this helping out? Like, I want to make sure this stuff is helping out. Like, I don't want to do this for no reason. So, does this help any of you at all in any way, shape, or form? Do you learn? Do you enjoy? Do you get any sort of value from these type of live streams? Someone said, I'm new to Super Chat and had wanted to request a look at LBC. Joshua Stephen Ward. LBC. We'll take a request in just a sec. Someone says, so how exactly, how exactly the math goes when an altcoin moves up in price with the Satoshi level counting my pennies? I don't understand that, Tony. Uh, I would say, if you're asking about the arithmetic of it, I would look at Marcus Koster's video on our channel about, uh, he did a two-part video about altcoins and Bitcoin and why looking at Satoshi value is important. That would actually explain a lot about how they're tethered together, which means they're attached. Knowing that Ethereum smart contracts are hackable, where do you see ETH future? Um, yeah, that's not necessarily 100% true. Anything in reality is hackable. So, you know, anybody can say, well, Microsoft is hackable. Where do you see Microsoft in the future? So um, I would be careful with how you actually phrase that. Um, someone says, yes, do Laman, Lance Harkey, fascinate the great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Aesthetic Films. Thank you, brother. Shout out to no fat warrior now. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tyler. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's an honor. You're, I'm your mentor, apparently. Thank you. Dark said yes. Wayne Roberts says, of course, this stuff is gold. Thank you, Wayne. Kilo said, get in line, Splendy. Just kidding. I'll join Sniper's Discord. It's lit. Yes, it is. Fibo Paju. Thank you, brother. Gemini. Thank you. Said you taught me everything. Miguel Santo says yes. Fibu. Kilo cuts. To Rob Hussein. You ever heard of syndicator bot? Yeah, I've heard of syndicator. To Rob says, yeah, man, your predictions are awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Ryan Brown. Appreciate that. Someone says, I value, I get value from your expertise. You are helping with those who, of us who cannot afford a subscription. Yes, I am totally open to that. That's why I do these live streams. Someone says, Johnny, I learn and enjoy and love these live streams. Very helpful for me to learn more TA. Awesome, Johnny. That's what I'd like to hear, brother. Someone says, yes, need your website to subscribe. Thank you. Yes, we're going to have, oh, need your website. It's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash snipers. And that will take you straight to it. And um, that's where you can get that. Somebody says, love these tables. You're the best channel, in my opinion. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate that, brother. That truly does mean a lot. So here's what I'll tell all of you. John Paul Watson said, always learning from snipers. Yeah, man. Snipers know what they're doing, right? I mean, I hope they do if they're going to be grabbing, you know, some headshots. Someone says, uh, love my Middle Eastern people. Mike Bitten. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, so is this time for a free book? All right, Joe. The Bitcoin Gym Shooter. You're very welcome, brother. Thank you. Very handsome. You're very welcome, Steve. Thank you, brother. Shout out. So this is no fat benefits. So here's what we'll do, guys. Uh, other than that, I think we took quite a bit of requests. I don't want to keep this too long. I want to have a video in the daytime tomorrow. I want to have a little bit of a shorter video. Um, we're back on the grind. We're back in the studio. Welcome back. We're going to be getting on the mode to get to the next level here on Snipers Tube. We're going to be building momentum in March so that by April, we can start hitting the 80,000 subscriber range and the Discord can now hit the 50,000 um, 
member number, which currently we're right over 25,000 members on Discord. So that's kind of what we're working on. The website will be released soon for the first phase, which is going to be a basic phase. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very basic, but it's going to be resourceful. Uh, as time progresses, we have different phases developed on the timeline. Uh, the developers and I are working on that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's going to go ahead and evolve over time to be a resource for all of you to take advantage of, to help and assist you to become full-time traders like I and many have. So with that being said, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Once again, remember to like the video, remember to subscribe, remember to join us on Patreon, Discord. Patreon is for all of our trade alerts, our masterminds, our ICO alerts, which we've just added in our one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions. Discord is for the community. It's a free resource. we got tons of stuff there. We'll have our website up soon. Follow us on Twitter if you guys want more of our surveys. We do community consensus on a daily basis. And with that being said, thank all of you guys for watching. Thank you, Duck. Thank you, R. Melvin. Thank you, Hi, I'm Tyler. Thank you, Stephen Value. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Michael Massey. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you, Eric. We're going to be heading over to our Ruby and Above Night Owl. All the Rubies head over to our Discord. We're going to be under the Patreon exclusive Ruby Plus area right over here. If you're not a Ruby yet, that's in the Patreon website. You guys can get those subscriptions in. Thank you all so much for watching. And we're going to be heading over there. And stay tuned for our next live stream. And once again, like always, snipers. Out. Bam! <laughs>